Amy from MogulNet.com, and I'm here with author Tamara Pierce, and we're at RoberCon. So, uh, starting off simple, what inspired you to start writing? Um, well, <clears throat> I'd done a couple of stories, and I won an essay contest when I was in fourth grade, but the real idea for writing, I was um, <clears throat> telling stories to myself, when I did the dishes uh, when I was in sixth grade, and my dad uh, caught me. And rather than say, Tammy, think people will think you're strange if you talk to yourself, he suggested that I write a book. And he neglected to say it might be difficult, for which I thanked him many years later. <laughs> and so I just asked him what I should write about, and he thought about it for a minute. And my dad and I um, shared books all the time. He was always introducing me to new writers. And we watched television shows. He introduced me to Star Trek. So he knew what I would like. And he thought about it for a minute. And he said, how about travels in a time machine? <laughs> and little dork that I was, I thought I could pretend I went back in time to the Trojan War. <laughs> and the thing that made it stick that really told me it was important to my dad that I try this, and I was a daddy's girl. Uh, if my dad wanted it, I was going to try it. He said I could use his typewriter. And up till that moment, if I had touched his typewriter, I would be missing those fingers today. Um, my dad did his union newsletter on the typewriter. It was death to touch the typewriter. If he wanted me to try this writing a book thing on the typewriter, it must be pretty important to him. So I sat down and I started to hunt and pack, and I actually don't type with that many more fingers today. But about a hundred pages, more or less, over a year later, um, without the typewriter, because my parents split by then, I quit, not because I had a full book, because I ran out of ideas, but my homeroom teacher in seventh grade handed me this book called The Fellowship of the Ring by some guy named Tolkien. And I was hooked on fantasy. And I read Tolkien, I read Robert Howard's Conan books, I read Michael Moorcock's Elric the Albino books, and then every fantasy thing I could find, and every science fiction thing I could find. And I was looking for something in particular. I was looking for characters like me. And I wasn't finding them for various reasons. So. I was writing the kind of books, or attempting to write book-long manuscripts with characters like I wanted to read, which were girl sword slingers. And that's how I started out. Okay. So you, do, you mentioned you were looking for someone like you and you wanted that strong female character, which you've kind of become known for in your books, and I know Alana, the Song of the Lioness books were like the first books that I really read that I saw a character like that in. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like only in like the past 20 years or so have females in literature become more like your characters. And you have been doing this for like over 30 years. Do you think yeah. you were kind of ahead of the curve on that? Well, um, there were uh, writers in the mid-70s, when I was in college, we saw the appearance among adult writers of Marion Zimmer, Mary Zimmer Bradley, Susie McKee Charnas, um, and other writers, Sharon Miller, uh, people like that, Anne McCaffrey, who wrote strong female characters, warriors. Um, McCaffrey was the only one who was doing straight women. She started as a romance writer. Um, and 
it showed in her Dragon Flight and then the other Dragon books. Zimmer, Bradley, McCharnas, uh, Miller, they were all writing either, for the most part, as far as I can recall, um, celibate women or gay women. And I was neither, so even though I was not able to write my own stuff at that time, I was still thinking more about heterosexual um, heroes. And then in the beginning of the 80s, when I was starting and when I was starting to write adult novels again, when I had completed my Alana manuscript, um, my second book-length manuscript, um, by then Robin McKinley and Barbara Hambly and a little later uh, Elizabeth Moon were all writing heterosexual female heroes. Robin McKinley started a little before me uh, Barbara Hambly started publishing about the same time I did. And obviously, we all had the same idea for straight female heroes. Um, but Robin, who had her female romances, um, straight female romances, moved away from female warriors, began retelling fairy tales. And so I was pretty much the only one who was doing that for a really long time. <laughs> and what was it when uh, Graceling and uh, Hunger Games came out? I think it was in the same year. Yeah. I just went, thank you! <laughs> because there had been yeah. stronger girls in, in young adult fiction for a while. But these two were the first female warriors mm -hmm. that I ran into. And I was so happy because we, we write what we would like to read. And while I was having fun with my own heroes, I really wanted to be able to read somebody else's versions. And I mean, there were more in adult science fiction and fantasy, but I wanted to read you know, in, in young adult, I like young adult literature. Mm -hmm. So things began to improve after that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I was thinking yeah. of, like, you know, Katniss and yeah. Hermione, obviously. Those yeah. sort of characters that you see more, they're not really the sidekick and they're taking yeah. charge and a lot of people would probably be dead in yeah. those books if not for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so kind of on the same note, um, it seems Serafina. like, yeah, yeah, Serafina. yeah, but um, it seems like literature is more ahead in representation of women than Hollywood is. <laughs> so that kind of leads to my question: Would you ever think of lending your stories to another medium of storytelling, like um, a television series? I always thought like Song of the Lioness would be fantastic on Netflix to binge watch. <laughs> Um, well, I've got, uh, is it two? At least one graphic novel mm -hmm. project underway. Oh, really? Um, but as far as the media thing goes, uh, I, ha I was approached over the years by four different outfits, mm -hmm. and they all fell through for one reason or mm -hmm. another. Money. Uh, being a big one, but well, for it was a big one for three of them. For another, they the problem with with the media people is that I have the disadvantage in their point of view of having characters carry over from one series to another, except for Becca Cooper, and she that she has well, pounds, mm -hmm. i.e., faithful. That's the only carryover, and I point them to Becca Cooper. But no, they want Alana, usually. They don't even look at Kel. But there are still characters that they, they want. They want exclusive rights to those characters mm -hmm. for the duration of their option. Not even the deal, their option. Mm -hmm. Which means, in plain language, 
which they are so reluctant to actually speak, and so shocked <laughs> when I actually point it out to them. They want to close out any possibility of my doing a movie deal on any other right. book, s s series, quartets, trip, trilogies, whatever, until their option expires. And they can redo their options for 500, 200, whatever, until the end of time, mm -hmm. if they so choose. So I just tell them, no, that's not happening. <laughs> because if I'm going to have someone want to bleep me, they have to run around back to kiss me. <laughs> and then usually they call up my agent and scream about me dealing in bad faith and then my agent tells them that they shouldn't have been talking to me at all. <laughs> and that, uh, there goes that. And they, they say something like, you'll never work in this town again. And I, my agent says, well, she wasn't in the first place. And that's that. If they finally came to an agreement and paid properly, I am not a fool. I would take the money. But I would also tell my fans, don't expect what you see on the screen to read in the book to show up on the screen, because it ain't happening. The first thing they'll do is change what you think the character looks like. Mm -hmm. Even the best choices, you don't always get Chris Evans as Cap. You get Michael Keaton as Batman. I happen to be one of the ten people in the universe who think Mike, who thinks Michael Keaton made a good bad man. <laughs> but that it is, as an actor, he looked nothing like Bruce Wayne or Batman. So it's a trade-off. Mm -hmm. I would certainly like the money. Don't mistake me. <laughs> Movie money is very, very, very good. Even if the thing flops, I can build a much nicer sanctuary for our cats. There are strays, but I'm not expecting it to look like my books. Not, <laughs> yeah, and also, Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. They, the director, did a tremendous job getting the movie onto the screen. Mm -hmm. Tremendous, beautifully done job. But he had to ch chop major chunks of the mm -hmm. books to do it. If he'd done the whole thing, there was this cartoon that showed Peter Jackson say to these two fan kids, if I do the whole thing, it'll be 40, it'll be 49 hours long, and who wants to see that? And he looks down at the two of them, they're looking up at him, and he says, never mind, and walks <laughs> off. And the two of them look at each other and say, was that a trick question? <laughs> I mean, Harry Potter. You know how much I would watch it. you know how much got chopped for yeah. the movies. Mm -hmm. Some of it not so well, mm -hmm. others more so. You can't do the whole thing. A, a lot of a book happens in your head. Yeah, true. <laughs> so when you sit down to write, what is your process? Do you get it all out and then search for the gems after, or do you are you a chart person? Do you outline? Um. I've tried to outline the whole thing that so seldom goes well. The last time I tried it, I ended up chucking five chapters worth, and I said, that's it, I quit. <laughs> By the time I sit down to work, I've been thinking about the book, unless it's the first book in the first series of a new contract, mm -hmm. when I've only been thinking about it for a couple years. Usually I've been thinking about it for four or five years, because I do multi-book contracts. I know my first four chapters, I set up the main character, some secondary characters, main theme, main struggle of the book. And then um, by the time I get to chapter four or five, I hit this vast wasteland called the middle, because I know my end. It's pretty basic. It's forest fire, a war, an epidemic. Um, the ground opens up, the palace collapses inside, and the rats reign supreme overall. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and then that vast wasteland called the middle. I scream for my husband, Johnny, what is it, sweetie? <sighs> well, uh, sibo has got him walking down the river and on the bottom in a big bubble, and my editor says that I've got to put in more evil, evil plotting plots of the bad guys, and I don't know what to do. And he says, well, what are the bad guys plotting? And I said, they're plotting to, well, they plotted to kill the prince, one of the remaining ones. And he says, well, how'd they kill him? And I said, they had lightning hit his boat and drown, and drown him. And he says, well, who supplied the lightning? And I said, a storm? And he says, well, who supplied the storm? I said, uh, a mage? And he said, do they need the mage anymore? And I said, they could find his body. Okay, honey, I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> and then I'll go on and then I'll go further along. And honey, I'm stuck again. <laughs> so basically that's how I get through the middle. Is I'll, I'll get stuck. Tim will help me. He says I reject a lot of his ideas, but I don't. I just find a branch off of what he said, and that gets me through the middle. So you use the phone a friend method? Phone, the phone a friend or run down to the dinner table, say, honey, or <laughs> sit at a couch and say, before we turn on Flash, can I ask you something? Yeah. <laughs> or if not, if I can't get help from Tim, I'll ask my sister Julie, or ask my writing buddy, buddy is Bruce Koval, who's a young reader, middle grade writer, um, and he, uh, we met over uh, him asking me to do a short story for one of his collections, and then I recorded with his full cast audio company. And so we've been friends a long time, and we're writing buddies now. And we, he comes over to my place, and we, we read what we're working on, and he gives me advice so if I get stuck I can ask Bruce or my editor. It depends on who will help me best. <laughs>